Hello, this is Scott Ballinger with ZymeWire, and I am sharing the screen with Stephanie Cooner. Stephanie is a legendary sales professional in the life sciences arena and a sales leader. Now she is an executive in the procurement group with Bristol Myers Squibb, which, uh, as most of you know, also includes Celgene now. So welcome, Stephanie. Thanks. Thank you, Scott. Happy to be here. Yeah. So I wanted us to get together and have a conversation around remote or virtual buying. Everybody's talking about remote selling, remote selling techniques. There's webinars, there's coaches, consultants, companies. I got my book on virtual selling, you know, so, but what about remote buying and partnering and, and figuring out how to find the innovative solutions that Bristol Myers Squibb needs in this new remote environment? So I wanted us to get together and focus on remote buying versus remote selling and speak to someone who's you know, has that responsibility and is sitting in that chair. So, you know, what are your thoughts on what some of the biggest challenges have been around procurement and working with partners in this new remote world that we're all in, uh, you know, uh, thanks to the pandemic? Yeah, so all, by the way, amazing topic. And, um, you know, I'm sitting here now in my current role as part of the procurement organization at BMS, but I sit within a specific function called business partnering and strategy. And a big part of that is for myself to align not only the business needs um, of today, but also the future with um, solution providers that are out there. So understanding what the market is asking for, what's out there, or what's out there and certainly marrying the two up together. And so prior to joining BMS, I spent roughly 18 years in business development yeah. in patient recruitment and, um, and healthcare technology. Yeah. And um, so I certainly understand the, both sides of the fence at this point, right? And so Absolutely. as I think about the challenges and this uh, new world that we're all in, um, it's definitely unique. <laughs> and um, I, I, you know, personally myself, I've always been a strong believer in relationship building. And, you know, for various reasons, I mean, obviously there's, there's advantages to that on multiple levels, but one of the most important pieces I think is the idea that it can allow successful business alignment through open and honest discussions, right? And so for, from a partnering standpoint, if you don't have that level of trust and connection, it makes it very challenging to, to engage as you develop together. And you know, personally, I think this is best done in person. Um, while there are some things that can be done in a remote setting, I, I do find this is something that is unfortunate for our industry today. And, you know, at, and to be honest, some of that actually even happens casually over lunch or coffees. Yeah. And, you know, we don't necessarily have that opportunity now. Um, Anyway, so, that, so that's one thing, but go ahead. Yeah, I was, wait, I was waiting for that word trust. I know you're a big trust builder when you were on the selling side. And of course, on the buying side, we, we all know in, in this uh, profession that uh, without that, it's hard to move forward. And in a virtual environment, I can see that being one of the, the biggest challenges is trying to you know, build that, that trust with the client when you can't be face to face. Yeah, and I think, I mean, it can, don't get me wrong, I think it can be done remotely, but honestly, you almost need to have an existing relationship for that to be as successful as it really should mm. be. So I don't know if that's, and certainly something that it's not easy to foster, right? And, you know, I think also about when I think about relationships and the challenges of partnering and buying and selling, um, the other piece I think about is the alignment with my internal business stakeholders, right? Because I'm marrying the two up together. That's right. And I'm sure there's connection there. And so from my perspective too, to have or not have that relationship with your internal stakeholders is also a challenge that we're seeing in this remote virtual buying environment too. So um, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, that, that, that's right. You're a, a conduit between the suppliers and your internal stakeholders. Um, well, have you seen any best practices and or worst practices as, as sellers try to access you and Bristol Myers Squibb? Have any best practices emerged and are there any uh, things you would counsel uh, all of us in the life sciences sales world to, to not do going forward based on <laughs> the, the environment that we're in right now? 
No, I hear you. I, I do think um, as far as best practices, um, you know, there are tools out there right now that can kind of help foster some of the virtual environments, such as I think, um, I think it's mirror. Is it mirror or oh, goodness, I can't remember the name of it anyway. Um, but there's companies out there that do offer the, the ability to foster this virtual environment. My, I think it's called Miro, maybe or mural where you can kind of go through and put, you know, stickies on boards and brainstorm together. So I think that's something that's going to help facilitate this environment a little bit. But um, I do think because, and I don't know if it's out of desperation, but because we're not able to be at conferences together and to meet on the street, there's a lot of what I'm going to call cold calling, but via email And, you know, I think that can get sometimes aggressive Um, and knowing that everyone has heavy schedules that they attend to now um, because we're so meeting heavy. We can't just walk down the hall and have the conversation. Um, I do think that ends up turning, um, you know, team members off, you know, possibly off from wanting to engage. And really, it's all about fostering an environment where you want to engage and, And to rely, I think, from a best practice standpoint, to rely on those warm introductions will be critical. LinkedIn, certainly everyone knows, oh, I see you're connected to this person or that person. Having that ability, I think, will be a important best practice moving forward. So I, I do think we will, I mean, we are going to go back to, to some level of in-person engagement, but I don't think it will be like it used to be. Um, most of the companies are remote, and so we're going to have to figure that out. Cool. And Stephanie, can you give us a day in the life? I mean, I know you mentioned to me some uh, amazing amount of meetings that you had just this week and then email volume, uh, people hitting you on other messaging uh, applications. But do you, do you just have a top line sense of just what it's like to be you? And, and so us as sellers can can think about that you know aggressive approach we're taking to you and your colleagues there. And maybe we need to dial back the cadence a little more or reshape some of the the, the content that we're sharing. Yeah, and, and think so, about those warm introductions. Yeah. Yeah, and so so you're right, Scott. I mean, in every any given week, I have probably between 60 and 80 meetings. Um, some of them are 10 minute meetings, some are 15 minute meetings, but some may be an hour. And so it's very challenging to find time to connect with someone that's not already an established person in my Rolodex, right? And so, you know, I think. By being, you know, if, if there's something that you can deliver for us that adds value, that's unique, calling that out immediately is going to be important because if it's not called out, it's delete, 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 because we just don't have the time to go through all the emails. Now, on the flip side, I have a soft spot in my heart for commercial development and business development, and I understand the needs that go into it. So I do try to answer and address as many as possible, but I mean, there may be times where on LinkedIn, my messages will go two weeks just sitting there and there's hundreds of them. And I, 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 hundreds. Wow. Wow. It's a lot. Yeah. So, so thanks for that visibility into to what it's like to, to be in procurement at a you know major pharmaceutical company. Um, you did say you think things will s- someday get back to face-to-face interaction, but any prognostication on what the rest of 2021 might look like? And do you have any business travel on your calendar yet? Right. So um, I do not have any formal business travel on my calendar, but there are some conferences that are emerging um, in, in, I think, Q4 of this year, certainly yeah. around that, that October, November timeframe, where um, I'm looking at, my team is looking at possibly attending. But honestly, we're carefully considering where we're going, because there may be conferences where, um, I'm sorry, conferences, there may still be business restrictions in place. So we may need to rely on, um, you know, a drivable distance, so events in Boston, perhaps, or the DC area, since we're in, in New Jersey. But you know, that's going to be important. And, you know, I think, I don't think there's going to be a level of in like in-person interaction within a business setting for the rest of this year, um, mostly because many of the businesses are trying to figure out how to get their employees in, let alone, you know, outside um, business contractors or consultants that are going to be working with us or partners. So it's, 
I mean, I feel, I feel bad because I know how important the in-person interactions are. And to be honest, it's important not only to start the dialogue, but also to continue the engagement through the sales cycle, right? Yeah. So think about all of the, um, the bid defenses that are occurring or the capabilities presentations. There's a lot of distractions going on, emails pinging in, like to make sure that both my team as well as, you know, uh, there's still um, engagement also on the supplier level as well. It's, it's hard to maintain. Absolutely. Well, Stephanie, thanks for the time. That's a great look into the life of a procurement executive at a major pharmaceutical company. I know the ZymeWire users will very much appreciate the, uh, the insights you provided and good luck juggling all those messages, meetings, and uh, I will look forward to seeing you in person one day, hopefully, maybe in 2021. But thank you very much. Likewise. Thank you, Scott.